Hello and welcome. Uh, right now we're going to do a little bit of a diversion here. I wanted to talk about this issue of uh, what, what information is sort of stored in analytic functions. Uh, think of this as more of a, a kind of a high level discussion. We're not going to get into the details, but rather just get some perspective on what analytic functions are in terms of the, the, in terms of the space of all functions of a complex variable. So in general, you know, f of z is equal to w. We write that down. If, you know, if we don't think of, of, of analytic functions, but just think of any possible association, this is any possible association uh, between uh, you know, points uh, z and w. So for instance, if I have some uh, domain that's in the z plane, right? If I have a point there and then I have this map that goes there to the w plane, and it creates some um, image, which we'll call f of d. And then there's this association, right? So basically, the function is, you know, an ordered list. It's an ordered list, right, of points z, call it z0 here. That'll be my z0. And then there's some w0 right there. Now this is a big list. Obviously, it's it's in fact it's 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 a continuum of z z points in this open neighborhood, right? So this uh, this open uh, set here D. So this is of course you know uh, uh, I would call un uncountably C O U uncountably infinite. Okay, so in general, any mapping, I mean, the spaces of all functions is just going to be an ordered list. So, of course, there's lots of data there. That's a lot of information. But we know, you know, f of z, if it's, if analytic, there's, a, you know, I would say huge or very strong constraints. on the form of uh, the form that that um, f can take. It's a very big restriction of, on the space of functions. Now, uh, if I have some mapping that's analytic, it has a very, 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 uh, has a very, 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 um, um, you know, it's a very restricted class of functions. Not any function is analytic. It's a, it's a very restricted set of functions that can be analytic. And uh, we want to know, basically, the question I want to sort of address here is basically, um, uh, you know, uh, what information is there? What information, sorry, what info is in f of z? Okay. So uh, basically, what do I need? What questions then do I need to ask about f of z to know everything there is to know about f of z? So uh, essentially, uh, if we think back to the question of general functions, I could start by saying, okay, I, let's say I have z zero. What is w zero? Right? And basically what I'd have to do is for every z0 point, I'd have to find out what the value w0 was. I'd have to actually plug it in and observe what value it is. And I'd have to do that for every number, or for every complex number in the domain. And that would be the only procedure. So that would be the only procedure to know everything there is to know about f. But do I have to do the same thing with analytic functions? So do I basically do I have to sample every every point uh, z naught 
in my domain to know what f of z equals w is? And the answer, of course, is, and that's a question mark there, the answer is no, you don't. In fact, uh, uh, you, don't have to even, you don't have to look nearly as wide or as far ranging. You don't have to have an exhaustive search of associations in order to find out what f is. In the case of analytic functions, um, actually a very small, only a very small, small subset of examples is what's needed in order to determine everything there is to know about f. So let's just give an example of what I mean. So what I'm what I'm saying is basically, um, uh, so I'll just state this as a as a as a theorem, if you will, and, and and not prove it. We're not going to prove it here, but just state this as a fact about analytic functions. Um, so um, the idea here is the procedure is that of a shining a spotlight. I'm going to call that S, which is going to be a subset of my domain. And the idea here is we have this. And then there is some big domain here. This is D. And then I'm going to find a little neighborhood around there. And this is going to be my S, right? And if, so if I have S, if I have Z, uh, which is an element of S, and then I, what I do is I find I find f of z, so that is, I find, I could also say I just find f of the entire s. If I know the correspondence for any subset, so now I know, I know s and I know f of s. If I know this correspondence here, that is sufficient. to uh, infer f on all of d. Or actually more precisely, if I have some other point that's connected in some way, so here is, here is s and I have some point in s, and if I find some other point, z0, that's not in s, so if I go z0 and it's not in s, but it is in d, and they can be connectable, so it's, it's Z is connectable to S. That is, I can draw a line. I can draw some line segments to it. If I can find that connection, then I can actually, uh, by just knowing this correspondence on that subset, I can discover f of z naught is value. I can find out what w is. And that is a really neat piece of uh, information. I'm not going to prove why we can do this, but the idea is that with only knowledge on a subset, I can find the value of f anywhere. That, that idea of information at a distance. Uh, or sort of The idea that f is determined by any subset subset s, uh, and the idea that uh, knowing something uh, in a faraway place can be determined by knowing things uh, 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 close by. All right. So that's the idea that we're playing with, and that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of property that analytic functions have. Um, uh, in fact, we can go a little bit further. There's an even stronger statement: um, if L is a uh, a line segment, in D, and it could be a uh, this could also be a curve. And as long as it's in D, so here's my set D, and it's in the complex plane. And if I just have a line segment in D, and if I know 
f of l f of l so if I have the correspondence there if I have that ordered list of points if I know if z is in l and I uh, know f of z equals w if I have that that ordered list of points just on a line in the domain this uh, knowledge is enough sorry I need to spell better e-n-o-u-g-h to determine to determine um, f of z in you know a, in a in a domain around around um, L all right so uh, now it could be that there are points that uh, that are disconnected an area like that that is part of D I won't be able to know anything about F there but I should be able to in some domain some open set that's surrounding L know what f of x is on all points uh, connected to it. And of course we can repeat this process. Once I know it here I can draw another line segment. I could extend it out. And anywhere I can go that's in the domain of D I can keep connecting and keep extending my function. So what they call this, this, this process of, 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 of always extending knowledge of F. This has a technical term, it's called analytic continuation. Okay, so analytic continuation again is basically saying that once I have information on a line, let's say, I can find this function, um, I, I have, I can find, uh, I can know what F is in some domain around it. So this seems like sort of a magical property, but you've been using this for quite a while because we know that f is connected to harmonic functions. And what do harmonic functions have? How do we determine a, a specific harmonic function? We, we need uh, boundary conditions, right? So of course that is exactly the values of u on some line. That gives us a boundary condition that allows us to determine uh, some u, uh, u function. And from that value of that u function, of course, we can determine an analytic function. So uh, boundary conditions are essentially the information that's required to determine solutions to, um, uh, solutions to the Laplace's equation, which is precisely what we need to determine uh, analytic functions. So this idea of uh, this severe constraint, so again, I guess we can say, just you know, put it here, um, you know, F, uh, the severe constraints of analytic functions uh, allow um, allow us to represent represent f, uh, which is an element of the analytic functions, uh, with much less information. All we need, basically all we need is f on some line l and then we can determine uh, f everywhere in any, in any sort of uh, anywhere in its domain that's connected to it. All right, and so that idea, um, this, this idea that we can represent functions with less information, that's shown up before. We've seen that with uh, a Taylor series. If f of x is some real valued function, maybe I'll, see, I'll use g to, to not confuse everyone. I can write that as a 
as a let's say a, a McLaurin series where this is some a n uh, times x of n, right? Where all of a sudden now g of x it can be represented as essentially an infinite list of numbers, right? So g of x being a, 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 a infinite correspondence between uh, real values x and and some y output, then can be represented as a, a as a a list, a, a discrete list of numbers that, that is infinite, but uh, it could be infinite. Uh, but seriously, uh, this is much easier to represent. It's much easier to store uh, these sorts of information rather than these correspondences here uh, because these are discrete. And this is uh, a, a continuum. A continuum. Okay, I didn't spell that right. All right, a continuum set a continuum of points. So uh, the severe restrictions of analytic functions, we'll see in later lectures how we'll also be able to represent analytic functions as power series in the complex plane. So that's where we're headed with this. Uh, okay, thank you very much.